Hello, Quinnell, and welcome to Q Today. I'm Allison Duddy. And I'm Mitch Vick, and this is our show for March the 1st. Our top stories from The Observer. Independent MLA Bob Simpson introduces legislation to move future election days. And it's time to order your daffodils through the Canadian Cancer Society. And coming up later in the show, Susan McNeil is back with another segment of Stop, Shop and Save in Quinell. And Nate is in conversation with Pat Asher of the Lions Club. Look forward to hearing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here at Q Today, we bring you the recent news provided by our good partnership with the Quinell Caribou Observer, combined with a bit of our own commentary. And we also bring you our own stories from the community. Now we do just give the highlights here, so if you want to get all of the details, be sure and pick up your copy of the Quinell Caribou Observer. Now over to Mitch here for a little bit of the news. Thanks, Allison. You bet. First up, independent MLA for Caribou North Bob Simpson has introduced legislation recently to move future fixed election dates to the fall after this May's election beginning in 2017. He says, British Columbians have rightly lost their confidence in pre-election budgets. He continued, pre-election budgets are never debated, never subjected to the scrutiny of opposition members and BC's independent officers, and never passed into law. That needs to change. Moving the fixed election date is part of the independent MLA's six-point agenda for democratic reform released earlier this month by MLA's Simpson, Van Doggen, and Vicki Huntington. The fixed election date bill would move future elections to the first Tuesday of October beginning in 2017. Of the nine provincial jurisdictions that use fixed election dates, only Alberta and BC hold spring elections. Simpson hopes the bill will be passed into law this session. He said, it's our sincere hope the government and opposition will support this change. If it passes, we'll still be going to the polls this spring, but at least we can restore confidence in the province's budgeting process for future years and prevent budgets and interim finance bills from being used solely for political purposes. What's your take on that? About time. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we're the only two provinces that aren't doing it and everybody else is, I would say that there's probably a pretty good reason behind that. Yeah, so. and he's absolutely right. Uh, you get this uh, fascination with using budget carrots to uh, assist you in an election, and that's not really fair. Exactly. So I think yeah. it's a good move. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I would agree. All right, Mayor Mary Shustrom is the latest proud recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal. Shustrom was nominated by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, or FCM, uh, for her exemplary efforts to make Quinell a great place to live. Now, FCM executive member and Prince George City Councillor Garth Frizzle was on hand to present the medal. I'm honoured to be recognised by my peers in local government from across the country, said Schustrom. And she continued, I haven't been involved in community work to receive awards. I truly love Quinell and believe that strong, welcoming and vibrant communities are built by people who share a common vision and are willing to work together to make things happen. But to receive an award of this nature is humbling and I'm very thankful to the FCM for nominating me. The commemorative medal marks the 60th anniversary of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's ascension to the throne as Queen of Canada. Some 60,000 Canadians will receive it in honour of their significant contributions and achievements. So congratulations to Mayor Schustrom in receiving one of these medals. 60,000 in all of Canada is really not that many. Yeah, so well done. You bet. Well, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Canadian Cancer Society. Volunteers will soon be canvassing businesses and industry by phone and email, taking orders for fresh daffodils. Helping with this year's daffodil campaign are two relatively new volunteers, Tamara Turner and Ivana Topic. Longtime society volunteer Kathy Briggs commented how great it is to have young blood on the team who brings such enthusiasm and new ideas. With her extensive experience with the society, Briggs admitted she just happens to bring useful baggage to her volunteering. She says everyone has skills they bring to their volunteering and that's a good thing. 
So when you receive notice, it's time to order bunches of daffodils. Remember to give generously in support of our local Canadian Cancer Society branch. The deadline for pre-orders is March 15th. If you don't receive a request to purchase daffodils, you can call cancer, the cancer office at 992-6551 or email ccsquinnell at shawcable.net. Awesome. I know I'll be getting some. So nothing, nothing makes it feel like spring than fresh daffodils. Yep. You know, we can't grow them up here, so any other way that we can get them is, uh, is great. Yeah, that's a great program for more, for more reasons than one. You're right. Exactly. The, the whole springtime rebirth theme is fantastic with for that. For sure. Yeah. You bet. All right, moving along, Northern Health has successfully recruited nearly a dozen Northern Medical Program, or NMP, graduates to include in a total of 55 physicians recruited since January 1st of 2012 from around the province, country, and world. While most of the students in the NMP are still in their residency or their five-year specialty training programs, Northern Health has begun to see the program meeting the needs of communities and families of BC. Although the Northern Medical Program has been admitting students since 2004, we are only beginning to see graduates settle in the region and begin to practice, Northern Health Board Chair Dr. Charles Iago said. And he continued, as physicians complete their residencies and specialties and as they take the time to determine where they want to practice permanently, we will begin to see more and more settle in northern BC. Community involvement is also critical in helping to address physician recruitment challenges. Fort St. James was down to one physician over a year ago and today is nearing a full complement of five physicians. This is a reflection of a partnership that encouraged a shared responsibility for all parties to recruit to their communities and this type of work has helped overcome challenges in other communities as well. So 55 doctors since January of last year. I that, think that's fantastic. That work. is, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And we definitely need them up here in the north and even further north than us. Well, so. it's been a challenge for for at least at least since I've moved up to this area has always been a common theme that we have an out-migration of doctors or retiring doctors mm -hmm. and struggling to replace them. So I think yeah. this is a, a great, a great news story for us. Definitely. Yeah. Local resident Bernice Heinzelman has devoted her time and talents to, among other things, the Quinnell Multicenter Fundraising Committee, the Quinnell and District Community Arts Council, the Interior Regional Arts Council, the Quinnell Theatre Action Group, Friends of the Library Society, Climate Change Action Group and the Quinell Multicultural Society. Wow, that's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, contribution. That is. Community Futures nominated Bernice for the Paul Harris Fellowship Award, which is one of the most prestigious awards in Rotary. Named after the founder of Rotary International, the award is intended to recognize a life that exemplifies commitment to compassion, ethical principles, and a demonstrated dedication to the Rotary ideal of service above self. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Quinell, President Keith Corbett presented the award. A donation has been made in her name to the Rotary Foundation for their work in education, shelter, health care, literacy, and other projects in the world that inspire hope and peace. In accepting this award, Bernice jo joins the company of other great humanitarians like Mother Teresa, Indiri Gandhi, and Nelson Mandela. That is incredible. It sounds like she's dedicated her whole life to, you know, causes in the community, or yeah. at least an awful lot of her time and incredible, and efforts. incredible it's, amount of time. Yeah, it's well nice done. to see her recognized for that. For sure. So, yeah, congratulations, Bernice. And now moving on to sports in Super League curling, the playoffs continued Exciting. last week. Yes, Frank Supermarket and Sky High Scaffolding actually postponed their game to a later date. Uh, but some games did go on as planned. Jar Transportation and Karen's Health Foods fought to the bitter extra end with Jar ending up on top 8-7. to seven. Willis Harper took down Douglas Lake Equipment 10-8 to eight in their close cl conflict. The Child Development Center won handily over Investors Group 5-1 to one, and the Billy Barker beat a and 8-6. And we will keep you posted as playoffs continue. Heating up, eh? It is, yes. <laughs> well, 
Both the Pee Wee and Midget Thunder teams played double headers last Saturday against the Prin George T3 Cougars. The Pee Wee Thunders started off strong in their first game, taking down the Cougars 5 to 2. And in their second game, the Pee Wees rolled over the Cougars 7 to 1, putting them into the championships. The Midget Thunder were also successful, taking down the Cougars 9 to 3 in their first game and 6 to 3 in their second also putting them into the championships. All right. The Midgets are off to Port Alberni and the Pee Wees are off to Creston for the provincial championships during spring break with the Bantam Tier 3 Thunder competing in Dawson Creek for their championships the same week. How great is that? Holy cow, talk about dominating. No kidding, that is just awesome to see. Yeah. All right, as Mitch mentioned at the top of the show, next up we have another segment of Susan McNeil's Stop, Shop and Save in Quinell. This time, Susan talks quilting with Denise Truman. Denise is a member of the Quilting Divas who meet every Tuesday at the Quinell Arts and Rec Centre. Check it out. Welcome, Quinell, to our home-based business segment for today. I have with me Denise Truman, and she is the president of the Quinell Quilters Guild. Welcome, Denise. Thank you. We're so glad to have you here today. As I'm going through the Home-Based Business Connection book, which is where I found uh, your guild, uh, we're trying to uh, raise awareness for the Quinell folks of all the different uh, home-based connections that, that are here in town. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the Quilters Guild? Well, I sew and uh, I met a lady in a quilt shop and she invited me to the guild, so that's, that's how I started. And I. And so now you're a quilting diva, I hear. Yeah, yes. apparently. <laughs> yes. So, um, Denise, I'm just interested in knowing how long has the Quilters Guild been around? Uh, I think it's 29 years this month. Oh my gosh. See, Quinell, I didn't even know that, and they've been here 29 years. Um, I really take a, a shine to your uh, diva over there, and she is your, is your mascot, I hear. That's, is that right? Yes. We, hey guys. I made her for the, the quilt show that we had held last year. And uh, and they decided that they liked it and made her the mascot. <laughs> made her the mascot. Oh wow, that's so so unique. So we have a, a block here. I wondered if you could just sort of tell us about it. I see it's got sort of the February month on it, and the one down below it is January. Um, how did the, how is this brought about, and where would you put that? Uh, I I just put mine in on a shelf mm -hmm. uh, in my kitchen, and um, every month I'll. I'm going to make a block for every month of the year and I will just hang it for that month and mm -hmm. then, then change it. Yeah. So sort of like a little mini calendar yeah. reminder. So yeah. I know you're working on one for March. Would you like yeah. to show our audience oh, what yeah. the March one looks like? Well this is this is my March one. It's in a work in progress and um, I did the shamrocks for uh, St. Patrick's Day and I did the the cow because uh, we have a ranch and uh, uh, we ha we start calving in March, so for me it's yes, you know that's totally totally suitable for that yeah, time for of year. Yeah, yeah. So how often does the guild meet? Uh, four Tuesdays of every month. Okay. Uh, the first Tuesday is um, a day meeting. Mm -hmm. We meet at uh, 10, 10 to eleven thirty at um, the. Um, <laughs> I have to make sure I get the right name. Um, up at the rec center? Yeah, it's at the rec center, okay. but there's a, yeah, at the rec center. Oh, so for, you're under, so you're umbrellaed under the Arts Council, is that what I yes. understand? Yes. Okay, so you're sort of in the artsy part of the, of the rec center. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so we have a morning meeting on the first Tuesday, the second Tuesday we have an evening meeting and it starts at 7 to 8.30, mm -hmm. and the third Tuesday is a morning and the uh, fourth is an evening. So if somebody in Quinell wanted to just come and attend the meeting just mm -hmm. to see what's going on, would they be welcome Oh, they're more to than welcome, yes. You'd be more than welcome. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. and so Quinell, if any of you are interested in quilting or getting some other ideas on quilting and wanting to join this, uh, this group, be sure to uh, check out the Arts Council schedule up at the Quinell Rec Centre mm -hmm. and uh, come maybe come to a meeting. So I know that we have a couple of quilt shops in town um, or fabric shops that, that members belong to. Yes. One is called the Quilted Accents, the other is Expressions by You, and Amelia's Cottons for Quilts. So be sure to drop in there if you're looking for quilting fabrics and, and ideas on, on what you might do. 
And you have a R and R sewing center, and she has Husqvarna. She's a dealership for, for Husqvarna sewing machines. Okay. And they um, they will do any maintenance on any sewing machines that need to be. You okay. know, it doesn't have to be a Husqvarna. Right. It can be any. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. she will service any of service, your machines. Yeah. So you don't have to have a Husqvarna to join the club or anything like that. <laughs> Whatever you have, you can just get started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about this item that? We have over uh -huh. here in the red. I, I think I know I have what it is. Yeah, it's a casserole cover, and um, it's just for taking your casseroles to for potluck, and you just put it inside and draw up the drawstring. Okay, so you draw the drawstring. Yeah. Oh, I and see. And then okay. you have the handles up here. And then you have your handles yeah. to carry your casserole. Yeah, and it, oh, it works. Wow. Works really nice. What an ingenious idea for Oops. for potlucks. Very good. Uh -huh. So, Denise, how long have you been actually quilting? I've been a member for three years at the Guild, okay. but I've been quilting for a few years okay. before that. And but can we? F where would we find the Guild um, if we needed to phone? Would, could we phone the Arts Center, or do you have a Facebook page, or something on the web? We do have a web page, okay. and I'm afraid that I didn't. Um, I didn't write that down, and I can't remember okay, what, what exactly but we can look it is. That up but yeah, sure. or um, any of the members can be contacted, and um, you can contact me, Denise Truman. Um, and what's your phone number? Seven uh, two five zero seven four seven one three two four. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So this is a little bit more of uh, Quinell's home-based business opportunities, uh, Quinell. So we look forward to you checking it out when you're ready and we thank you for joining us today. Well thank you for that. The Lions President Pat Asher met with Nate recently to discuss the Lions latest contributions to our community. Here she is talking with Nate about an award-winning peace poster contest and the Lions literacy program. Let's take a look. Thanks very much, guys. I'm here with Pat Asher, president of the Quinn Alliance. How are you, Pat? I'm fine, thanks, Nate. Nice to see you again. Yes, it's, it's a really uh, beautiful day out there. Spring uh, is yes. coming. Yeah. yeah. We're here to talk a little bit about uh, Lions Club, and you are the president of the Lions. Yes, I am. I'm yeah. enjoying it. Are you, oh, is that right? What's the best yeah. part of it? Uh, just the busyness of it. Yeah. Sometimes that gets to be a bit much, but I am enjoying it. Uh, and so that leads us in right in, into the things that lions do. Um, you know, basically, uh, people are familiar with the garage sale. So tell me when, where, wh why do wh uh, something uh, about the garage the sale? The last Saturday of the month is when we have our garage sale from nine to two. Mm -hmm. um, but. Almost every Wednesday we have a work bee from 9 to 12, mm -hmm. except, except the Wednesday after the the, um, gra the garage sale. So we're taping this on a Wednesday, so you're playing hooky. Yes, I am playing <laughs> hooky. They might fire me. <laughs> but yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, and so the, you have the garage sale the last Saturday of the month. Yes, and this coming Saturday, in fact. Uh -huh. And so you, Lions raises money through the garage sale, through various uh, other other ways, raffles, this and that. Uh, I remember you. There was a really nice house, playhouse that was for sale uh, for a raffle a little That's while ago. That's right. Yeah. The playhouse. Yeah. We made good money on that. Yeah. And a lot of work went into that. The mm -hmm. thing is, with a raffle, so much work goes into the raffle. There's mm -hmm. so much behind the scenes work. Well, I know that the last raffle you did was really a lot of fun, wasn't it? The, at the Save oh, on yes. Food. It was. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun part. Yeah, and it was really great. John here got, went out there, yes. vi videoed it, and the winners going, grabbing their food, and all yes. that kind of thing. That was a lot of fun. Yes, so, Patty Jerepak did really well on that. Mm -hmm. She she ran the whole thing. Wow. She cracked the whip. Yeah. Okay, so uh, okay, so you raise money, uh, and let's say what what happens with this money. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of the projects that uh, that you do. And the, uh, well, we um, the besides a garage sale, we have um, and a really important part of our club is the health department, and mm -hmm. that's where uh, it's handled privately. And uh, requests come to certain members of the club, and uh, they're handled very quietly. And 
and uh, we're really glad to be able to do that, people okay. that need special help. So it's not public uh, who gets help or whatever, but some of the things have are, are what? What kind of help do you, do you, do you give? Oh, building ramps and, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe helping with uh, financially in a small way. And mm -hmm. And I know that uh, I remember one just a little while ago where you cooperated with the Knights of Columbus to 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 get these skookum beds for people, special beds that were put hospital type beds that were uh, used. Oh yes. Yeah. So that yes. yeah. So those kind of things people yes, need help and that's right. and they come, and but there is a big public initiative that that you're involved in. Yes. But, you know, all and, very exciting actually. Mm -hmm. um, we've just started somebody. Oh, well, of course, Nate <laughs> put together this um, uh, survey. Uh, survey to um, mm -hmm. ask people what we need in Cornell. And it was a very in-depth survey, and it went on for a long time, didn't it, Nate? Mm -hmm. A few months, yeah. Yes, and uh, the answer turned out to be what we needed most of all was uh, housing, senior mm -hmm. housing mm -hmm. is what we wanted to go for and um, that's what we're going to do and now we can actually say that. Mm -hmm. We have a piece of land that we secured mm -hmm. and it's and we are now a society, the housing, um, housing, what is it? Uh, yeah, some kind of housing society, yeah, BC, the uh, Quinnell Lions Housing. Society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are going along at baby steps. It'll mm -hmm. probably be a long time, but it is exciting. Well, congratulations. Oh, I know okay. I know it's a while, but there is so much enthusiasm. You, you've got Mitch Vick, your chair of that, yes. and, and Peter Nielsen's been very uh, yes. in, instrumental in that, too. That's right, well. and, and several others that are very uh, knowledgeable about it, and I do mm -hmm. hope you have them on the We've had Mitch talk about it already once, but uh, yes. we will continue to yes, do it. Yes, that's right. They okay. really know what they're doing there. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple other programs that the Lions do. One is a literacy program, and then I'm going to get into this uh, peace post peace contest uh, in a okay. little bit. But the literacy program, it's not exactly the Alliance initiative. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a Quinnell, uh, I always forget the term, Yeah. but it's the... Uh, Literacy Cornell Society, mm -hmm. and we have um, Rebecca Buchel, who is a coordinator for that, and she has, she do, does workshops, and she has got this literacy in two elementary schools, and um, the Lions have come and joined as tutors in some oh, of them. Mm -hmm. In one school, we have uh, three Lions tutoring, and in another we have four and and two of the li and lions in each bunch is coordinating the whole thing uh -huh. so that's been a lot of work um it's fun though hey reading to the having the kids read yes to you and we spend an hour and a half with three children once a week mm -hmm. and so the, right now we have 11 in voyager mm -hmm. and i think 12 in dragon lake well congratulations but, on that that's really and yeah. the same number of students mm -hmm. And apparently it makes a real difference to the child's uh, progression. Mm -hmm. If they're having trouble with reading, it makes gives them confidence, and it's mm -hmm. a fun. Turns out to be a fun thing to read. Yep. Oh, that's great. And you do you do that too? I do that too. Yeah, Tuesday's okay. my day. <laughs> okay. And the other thing is something that uh, we've got here. There was a peace uh, contest. Peace, peace poster contest. Peace yes. poster contest, right? That has been sponsored by Lions International. Mm -hmm. And this last fall, um, I approached three elementary schools to see if they would be interested in doing a peace poster contest through their school. I secured one of them, and before long, we had 27 posters wow. come out of Voyager School. Um, they didn't come out of it, but mm. they were displayed there, mm -hmm. and we had a winner for mm -hmm. and it was? that contest. Who, uh, the winner was picked by the teachers, Okay. and that winner was Samantha Samite. Mm -hmm. What grade Samite, is she in? Sorry. She's in, uh, grade, She's in grade six, I believe. Well, congratulations, Samantha. Yes. And I really like this because it, you know, there's a dove, 
and it uh, has all the flags of uh, of the many nations, and Canada's in the middle. A lot of thought went <laughs> into it. A lot of thought, and very nicely done with the sun, the sun behind it, uh, you know, showing hope and yeah. strength. And there's the kids, because I think there was a theme about the... The theme is imagine peace. So that's what these children are imagining. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they're um, from all backgrounds, yeah. She did, she put a lot of work into that. Well, congratulations, Samantha. But yeah. the um, next part of that, of course, oh. is that her poster was sent to our District D, mm -hmm. and in that district, she won first prize there as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, we should talk to her. We should maybe go yes. up and have a little we chat with Samantha. We should have had her here today. I know, I, we should have, definitely. Um, but in, in District D for Lions, just uh, for people who don't know, if they don't know their geography, uh, it is uh, a third of British Columbia and goes down into Washington State, is that? Yes, it's yeah. the size of a third of British Columbia, but it does go down as far as Moses Lake in Washington State and up as far as Quinnell and Prince George wow. to the north. So that's a very, that's it a large a area. And she won first prize in the whole district. She won in that district. Wow. Yes, she did. That's great. Okay, so um, I thank you very much for being on the show today, it's Pat. Been enjoyable. And uh, just for any last words about lions and people getting involved or time uh, for your plug. Pardon me? <laughs> time for your plug for lions. Oh, yes. Well, we really. Um, like the support of everybody. Everybody has been so, so supportive of us. And uh, we'd love for you all to support us, support us in joining Lions, support us in donating goods, and uh, and wherever you think you can help us. Come um, out to the garage we, sale? We get more out of it than anybody mm -hmm. because it's just so, um, so uh, positive. And makes you feel really good to, yeah. to be part of it. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Pat. Appreciate you coming in. Of course, Q Today really appreciates the sponsorship of the Lions Club for our programs this year. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you guys. All right, before we take a look at the community calendar, we always would like to thank the Lions for their continued support of us here at Q Today. And now, let's check out our community calendar. Well, that's it for this show. We want to hear from you, and we want your story and your comments on this show. How are we doing? Whatever you think is important, we think is important. So email us today at qtoday at qcatv.ca with your story, or ask us to cover a story you know the community would just love to know more about. You bet. Now, as we leave you today, we would like to share with you another video of Christine Allen and Friends. This one is titled Funky Jam, One Chord Fits All, and it features Christine with Jyla and Damien. Hope you enjoy. And remember, Q Today is about Quinnell talking to Quinnell. Bye for now.